Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is a Leslie Ann Sasanqua Camellia. This is Leslie Ann Sasanqua Camellia, a fall and early winter blooming variety with beautiful pinkish white flowers. Like most Camellia Sasanquas, Leslie Ann can get big over time. I would imagine it'll end up over 10 feet if it was never pruned. It's definitely slower growing in a container than some of the other varieties. So I think this thing's gonna be very easy to keep, even less than six feet in height for a very, very long period of time, just by taking a small amount off of it every year. Camellia Sasanquas are best in zone seven to nine. If you had a very protected space in zone six B and it wasn't in a lot of the north wind, it might be worth a try. Like most camellias, they're actually pretty slow growing. We might only get about three or four inches of growth out of these in a single season, which is great because most camellias will outgrow the spaces that we put them in. So at least this extends the period of time in which we have to make hard decisions about pruning them. Camellia sasanquas will take a lot more sun than camellia japonicas will, but I wouldn't test them in all day sun. I don't think they would perform very well there. If you have a spot where you get half a day's sun, either in the morning or the late afternoon, would be ideal. There are a lot of different uses for these fall blooming Camellia Sasanquas. If you're gonna use them on a foundation though, they really need to go on a corner and you know, the thing's gonna grow into almost a small tree. So it's not gonna be very good with windows at all. If you had a wall that had no windows on it, these can actually be grown flat on a trellis and be espaliered. Takes a lot of patience and a lot of work and a lot of years to get that to happen, but they are quite beautiful when they are grown on some sort of structure, on some sort of trellis. They also work well in containers, probably better in zones eight or nine in that case, so that the roots don't end up freezing solid and doing damage to them. Probably not a good idea in zone seven, unless you were gonna protect it in the winter time in some sort of structure or bury the pot or something like that. And then of course, out in open space. And if you're in zone seven, eight or nine, these can actually be used as screening plants um, I wouldn't put the north wind on them. So, you know, a screen on the uh, east side of your property or the west side of your property, maybe you had some trees on the other side of it would be kind of ideal. And they would create a beautiful screen with this evergreen foliage that grows near the base with a little bit of top pruning on it. Of course, the main feature of Leslie Ann Sasanqua Camellias is these beautiful white flowers with the pink edges on them. They're smaller flowers than some of the other varieties, but the flower's absolutely perfect and it's a double so it has more petals per flower. This plant right here is absolutely loaded up with buds. It's gonna be blooming a long time. It's November now. These will typically bloom late October, November, December, and into January and even February, depending on the temperature outside. The flower buds that are close to opening will get damaged if the temperatures are down in the low 20s or upper teens. But the other ones that are still tight on it will stay um, viable as long as it warms up in a reasonable amount of time. Here's a better representation of the flower, which is just an absolutely perfect little double flower that's white with pink edges. In terms of planting camellias, I've linked videos below for planting them either in clay soils or in sandier soils. Just follow those instructions and you should be fine. Camellias are definitely one of those plants that just don't like wet feet. Camellias are not plants that require a lot of ongoing watering once they're established. Really some of the best camellias I ever see are places where people aren't maintaining them at all and just letting them grow over time. They're extremely drought tolerant once established. The first year or so you'll want to go out and put your finger in the ground, maybe a couple inches down, maybe three or four inches back from the trunk and make sure it's not too dry. If it is, drown the entire space around it and then let it dry out again. That drying process will encourage it to root into the surrounding soil. Camellias are best fertilized in the mid spring with an Azalea Camellia Rhododendron fertilizer. That's a fertilizer for acid loving plants. Usually those types of fertilizers are slow release. Just make sure the one you're buying is and it'll last three to four months and then run out in the summer and let this thing kind of go into a natural dormancy. We don't want to put a lot of leaves on these late in the summer for two reasons. One, that foliage would be very vulnerable to getting burned in the winter time if it hadn't hardened off. The other thing is the flower buds, which this thing is absolutely covered in, would end up being covered up by a late season, late season growth spurt 
and you wouldn't be able to see the flowers as well in the fall and early winter. I wouldn't do any late summer pruning on these. We wouldn't want any late growth to come on these and that would potentially be damaged. Plus the flower buds are set by then, so you'd definitely be cutting flowers off if you pruned it that late. So prune it in mid-spring, and if you need to prune it, you can get after these pretty hard. They only grow a few inches a year, so if you cut a foot off this thing, you can actually skip a couple years without having to prune it again. Camellia is in the T family and actually has its own scale named after it called T scale that will attach to the underside of the older leaves in the bottom of the plant and sometimes along the stems. I just don't worry about it. There are insect controls for it if you're interested in doing that. Deer will eat camellias. They like them about as much as we do. So if you have a space on the edge of your property and you have deer coming in, they're gonna eat this plant for sure. So you wanna use it as a foundation plant if that's the case. One issue you definitely have if you plant this plant too deep, over mulch it, over water it, you're almost certainly gonna be visited with root rot. That's the thing that will kill this plant for sure is really loving it to death. So what are you waiting for? Even you can grow the low maintenance, beautiful fall flowering Leslie Ann Camellia. Thank you for watching my video and if it was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you have about camellias. Thanks again.